Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 6th of July 2020 and the time is 9.07 British Summer Time. And it's been a very positive start to the European trading session. We've seen big gains across all the major indices in around uh, rallies of 2%. Uh, and this was fueled on the back of a very positive session in Asia overnight. Um, the Shanghai Composite uh, had its largest single daily gain since 2015. Uh, we had a big rally in stocks in mainland China, as we did in, in Hong Kong. And one of the reports, uh, one of the reports behind the um, behind the positive move, was uh, stated that um, that um, margin trading, um, margin financing, uh, has has has, uh, has grown greatly in the last number of months and that is that was cited as one reason behind the uh, the major move to the upside uh in in chinese stocks now the, the very bullish move seen in china comes amid a time um where the health crisis is, is still sadly rumbling on over the weekend uh the world health the world, the world health organization um uh, said that there was a record number of daily cases uh over the weekend uh 212,000 uh, additional cases uh, is, is, what, is what their their reading was. Uh, in the U.S., over 30, you know, in the region of 39 states, are, I've seen an increase uh, in, in the number of cases. So the health crisis is still very much front and center. But today's session it seems to be dominated by the bull of sentiment out of China, and that seems to be rippling around the rest of the world. Uh, it is worth noting uh, at the back of last week there was some hopes and some, some positivity. Um, on the back of the fact that the U.S. jobs report, the non-farm payroll figure, was better than expected, um, we also had um, news out of out of out of Pfizer and also Bio, um, BioNTech. Um, their 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 progress in relation to a potential COVID-19 vaccine has been going so well so far, but it's still very early stages yet. So what I'll take to do now is take a quick look uh, at the week ahead article. Um, look at the major events of the week, and then I run through some of the popular markets, indices, foreign exchange, and a few foreign exchange pairs, and then also a number of commodities. Um, so the week head article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com. Under insights, you'll find it under news and analysis. So this week, the major events to look out for, uh, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia, interest rate decision that's going to be out on Tuesday, or depending which on which we're at in the early hours, overnight, overnight um, um, for us, for us in, in, in the UK. Uh, we have first full year figures from Halfords, uh, well, they, they do a number of things, but largely a cyclist specialist here in the UK. JD Sports will have full year numbers out also tomorrow on, on Tuesday. We also have first quarter numbers coming out from Whitbread, and we have second quarter numbers coming out from Levi Strauss. Uh, one of the big things to, talk, to look at this week, even though a lot of it has been already been discussed and mentioned in newspapers, is that the UK is going to have a, uh, an economic statement. Uh, Rishi, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, is going to map out uh, effectively spending plans and a way to kind of fiscally stimulate the economy. Uh, there's already talk of about five billion going on infrastructure, roads, broadband, schools, all these sorts of various things, and even the house building sector is, is, is tipped to receive a boost as well. Uh, speaking of house builders, Persimmon, one of the biggest home builders in the UK, they have second quarter updates. They have a second quarter update coming out uh, on Thursday. We also have a second quarter update uh, from Rolls-Royce uh, coming out on Thursday. Uh, we have a first quarter update <coughs> from Workspace, the, uh, the property specialist, coming out on Thursday too. Uh, we also have a second quarter update from Delta Airlines on Thursday. Uh, as always, <coughs> excuse me, the US weekly jobless claims report will be coming out uh, on Thursday. That's going to be closely watched <coughs> uh, to see at which the rate at which the number of new people signing up for job um, unemployment benefit is it has been tapering off and it's likely to taper off and also keep an eye on the continuing claims report. Uh, last week, that unexpectedly actually increased, uh, which could be a sign that the pausing of the reopening of, of, of economies in the U.S. could actually be causing people to actually people who were brought back to work to now go back on to um, to be back to be unemployed or back to be furloughed. Um, and lastly, on as far as um, economic indicators and announcements go, uh, the big one to watch out for at the back end of the week will be the Canadian jobs report. 
Um, starting off now, I'll take a look, as they always do, across a number of the big indices, starting with the FTSE 100. So we're broadly speaking, in a nice upward trend for the last number of months. Today, uh, well, we're just below 3,600 now, but we have been above it. Uh, so it was the highest level. We, we hit about a 10-day high or a week and a half high on the FTSE 100. While we hold above this trend line here, it's likely we're going to see further gains. And should we press on higher from here, <clears throat> we could be looking at retesting 3,600, 3,400, and a decent move beyond that could take us up to the high seen in June at 3,513. If, though, we do have a move to the downside, we could see some support come into play from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, um, and that comes into play. The 50-day moving average comes into play uh, just, just south of 6,100. It comes into play at 6,099. And we can see here on a, few, on a couple of occasions not that long ago, the 50-day moving average acted nicely as support. And if a metric has acted as support as a pa in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future, although there are no guarantees. It is a fairly similar situation over in Germany with the DAX. It's been driving higher since late, since late March. Nice upward trend all along here. Today, it hit its highest level, uh, last seen since about the since early, early to mid-June. Uh, we still haven't, taken, haven't uh, tested the highs of June yet, but that's probably that will be the next area to keep an eye out for to the upside. So keep an eye out for 12,930. Uh, if we do have a pullback in the, uh, in the in the DAX, you know we could see support come into play from this red line here, the 200 moving average that comes to play at 12,157. And if you go below that, we could be looking head back down towards 12,000. Uh, and to be honest, it's only really if we have a size of break below this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which acted nicely as support on a few occasions back in May. It's only really if we have a decent break below that, could then we begin to rethink the wider upward trend over the past few months. A look across the Atlantic Ocean and see what's going on with the Dow Jones. Similar situation been a nice upward trend the last number of months. Uh, we're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open um, around 26,294. We're pretty much hovering in around the 200-day moving average for the Dow Jones. The 200-day moving average is often kind of seen as a, kind of a, 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 a benchmark. If the market's above the 200-day moving average, it seems to be it seems to be bullish. If it's below it, it seems to be bearish, it seems to be weak. So we're pretty much in around that metric at the moment. If we can get back above that metric comfortably and hold above it, we could be looking at building on the gains and looking at retesting the highs of early to mid-June in around 27,633. But even if you drift, drift back below, drift lower from here, we could see support come into play from the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, it acted as support nicely in mid-May, again in mid-June, and also in late June. So that metric on a few occasions has acted as support uh, not that long ago. So, 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 so there's a possibility we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold should we see a move down towards back towards the 50-day moving average. And that comes into play at 25,208. I'll take a look now. I'll check out the S&P 500. Once again, it's a similar situation to the um, to the to the Dow and also uh, the European indices. It's been a nice upward trend the last number of months. We are edging higher along here. In fact, today's level uh, probably the, the highest level that we've seen uh, since about the 11th of uh, of June. So we're in a strong. We continue to build on on the recent gains. We're pressing higher. We're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open around 3,176. If we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,200. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of early to mid-June in around 3,232, 33. Uh, if we do drift a bit lower from here, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. Once again, it's been a common theme with a few of the major indices that found support from their 50-day moving averages. We could see something similar with the with the uh, with the S&P 500 as well, and the and the um, the S&P 500 50-day moving average comes into play. Well, it's just south of the 
200 day moving average, it comes into play at 3,000. And 19. And notice how the 50 day moving average, the blue line here, almost kind of coincides or is coming into converges with the 200 day moving average, which also acted as support on a few occasions recently. So, with the convergence of, of those two moving averages, some traders would be keeping an eye on the 200 day moving average, others would be keeping an eye on the 50. So, it kind of almost like compounds uh, the, the strength potentially, how, 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 uh, how crucial that metric could be should we see a drift back down there. So you can see, so the common theme is that stock markets in Europe and the US are pushing higher. So if tying in with Dow theory, which says, what, what says the averages must confirm each other, while they're all moving together at the same time, higher that is, it's likely that the, all those could continue to move higher. Uh, I'll take a look now at a couple of the big currency pairs, starting off with Euro dollar. So the Euro had a great move between from May into early June, hit a, hit a three month high in early June, you had a pullback, a lower low, a lower high. Then we've been trading sideways the last few days, but we now appear to be, we've clearly found support from this zone here in at one spot, 11.68. While we hold above that, uh, we could look at building, up, pushing higher and kind of building on the kind of wider gains. And if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading back up towards 114 or up towards the, um, the highs in June, in early June, in at one spot, 14.22. And if you take all that level there, we could be looking heading back up towards the highs of early March in a one spot 14.95. If, on the other hand, we do have a decent break below this area here, um, the lows of late, or kind of mid June in around one spot 11.68, that could head us back towards this red line here, the two of the moving average, and that comes into play in a one spot 10.40. We could see a few occasions it acted resistance in around late in late March, and then we saw a bit of consolidation in that zone. Also, I said March, I meant May. We saw we saw some um, resistance come into play in around late May on a few occasions. So keep an eye out for that metric. Should we have a decent move to the downside? I'll take a look now. At what's going on at the pound versus the U.S. dollar? So sterling dollar has been drifting lower for the last three weeks there thereabouts. To be honest, it hasn't been the most interesting of of, of, of um of currency pairs recently but we're um but we are but we are pushing lower we remain in the downward trend recently volatility has been low but notice how we've had a higher a lower low a lower high a lower low a lower high we've had a, a few lower lows and lower highs the highs of early Ju of july haven't really taken up the highs of late june yet so we're still in the recent downward trend if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again if we do drop below 124, we could be looking at retesting the lows of the late last month in around one spot, 22.57. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here, the lows of the lows of mid June in at one spot, 20.76. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards 120 itself. You know, a big psychological number. If, on the other hand, uh, we do manage to kind of hold above the 124 area and look to build on the, on the recent gains we've seen in the past few sessions, keep an eye out for this red line here, the Trinity moving average. That comes into play at one spot 26.84. And we can see how that metric acted nicely at resistance here uh, in the middle of June. So if that metric has been important in the past, it makes it likely that it'll be important in the future, but there are no guarantees. And if we go up, and if you take out the Trinity moving average, then keep an eye out for the highs seen in June in at one spot 28.13. I'll just take, take a look now at some commodities. Um, Brent crude, the September contract. So I've always had a great run between late late August, August, late April, late April um, into into June. It's had a very decent run. There's a bit major bounce back in the oil market between production cuts from OPEC Plus. In addition to that, the the reopening of economies changed perceptions about what what demand is going to be. But given that we've had health, you know, uh, issues in relation to countries and U.S. states reopening their economies has led to an increase in cases. That's kind of almost caused some, some countries and some, and some U.S. states to pause or even revert the reopening of their economy. And with that, there's been some fears that, oh, hold on, maybe demand for oil won't be that high because we seem to be in the scenario of if we reopen our economies too much, COVID-19 cases take off again, and then we've got to pause that. So 
the moves in oil hasn't been particularly interesting recently, but by and large, we're still in the wider upward trend of the past few months. And if you do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the lows of early of early of early March in at $46.33. And even if you drop below from here, if you do have a pullback, it could be found for mid run the kind of big big number, big psychology number of 40 bucks per barrel. Now lastly I will take a look at what's going on on the gold market. Gold, it was only last week, mid the last week, gold and the Wednesday the first of July hit its highest level as of October 2012, so it was a new, new seven, 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 seven and a half year high. But the gold, the gold market has been a strong, strong trend for the last number of months. Um, the last few sessions, to be honest, have been quite boring. It's been a fairly low, 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 um, low, uh, low volatility. The range has been fairly small. If anything, it, kind of, it would kind of speak to some sort of, you know, potentially kind of indecision. But keep in mind, we're still, you know, not too far away from making a seven and a half year high. So the sentiment is, is still clearly bullish, and and uh, the the outlook is still, we still could be the, the the outlook is still quite positive. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking heading back towards 1789, and if we go beyond that, then they get a big psychological number of eighty hundred will then come into the fold. Uh, if we do have a pullback, and if we do, if we take out the recent lows here of late June in at 17.47, it could put us back on track to this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at 17.29, and we can see nicely on a few occasions that metric acted as as a support. So, if we saw buyers enter the fold uh, previously at the 50-day moving average, it's likely we could see buyers enter the fold should we retest the moving average in the near term, but obviously uh, there are no guarantees. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to this video. Uh, stay safe, have a good trading week, and good luck.